In this video, I'm going to show you how I go from a blank PCB board to a fully working PCB. And we're going to do it using a hobbyist level CNC machine. In my electronics projects up till now, I've gone for either perf boards or directly soldering the components together using wires. And fair enough, both methods get the job done, but there's just so much soldering to do and managing all those wires can become tricky at times. So when I came across this method browsing the internet, I knew I had to give this a go. And whilst this method is in no way a replacement for manufacturers like PCBWay, it does have some utility. This video is going to be a high level walkthrough of how I made this PCB which is based on my last project. If you'd like a more detailed explanation of any of the parts, please drop a comment down below and I'd be happy to get that sorted. So there were four main components that made up this circuit, the Pro Micro board, the rotary encoder, the buzzer module and the OLED screen. In KiCad, I made symbols and footprints for each of the components using the symbol editor and the footprint editor. I imported all the symbols into the schematic editor and made the connections as per the circuit plan. Once the circuit diagram was complete, it was time to import this into the PCB editor and start making our PCB traces. I imported all the footprints into the PCB editor and then arranged them to represent what I want the final circuit board to look like. Then I used a plugin called Free Routing to make the traces for me. It does this for you automatically so it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Once we were all done designing the PCB, it was time to export the Gerber and the drill files so that we can generate our G code to send to the CNC. The software we use to generate the G-code is called FlatCam and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And to be honest with you guys, in this software there are a lot of different settings to configure. Basically you have to provide the tool type you're going to be using, the size of your CNC end mill, the feed rate, the spindle speed and a whole host of other settings. A lot of trial and error went into this part but I was eventually able to get settings that worked well with my CNC and the bits I was using. Before jumping into making your own PCBs, do make sure you take out some time to familiarise yourself with the settings, what they mean and how it interacts with the equipment you have on hand. Once I generated CNC jobs for the isolation paths, the cutout and obviously the drill holes, I was able to export the G-code ready to send to our CNC machine. The last software we're going to be using to make this PCB is called Candle and it's what we use to send the G-code over to the CNC. Firstly, you want to get your PCB really firmly attached onto the bed of the CNC. I use this double sticky tape onto some MDF and then clamp it down using the provided clamps with the CNC. Then the next step is to generate a height map to make sure everything is cut to the right depth. This is really important because you can't say for sure that your PCB is 100% flat. In order to generate the height map I used this probe which was made for me by my brother who is a million times better at this than I am. The JST connector connects to the probe port on the CNC board. One of the crocodile clips attaches to the bit that you'll be using to probe and then the other attaches to some copper tape that's stuck onto the PCB. So essentially what happens is every time the bird makes contact with the PCB, the circuit closes and the CNC is able to read that as a height and then it probes a little mesh that we set up in candle. So by this point, you've got your PCB firmly attached onto the CNC, you've generated your height map so now we're able to load up the CNC files and send them off to the machine.
Once everything was done, I took the PCB off the MDF and gave it a good clean and it was looking absolutely fantastic. The board had really well defined tracks and nice open spaces for pins to go through so we were on the right track. However, in order to make sure we had actually been successful with this project, it was time to get everything soldered up. Because this was a test PCB, I didn't want to solder my components directly onto the board, so I decided to use some female header pins so that I can remove them once I had checked everything. And then with everything ready, it was time to get the circuit soldered up. The final soldered circuit was looking really good, but now it was the moment of truth. I was going to connect the USB-C cable and check if everything worked. And everything was working absolutely perfectly guys, so we had managed to make our very own PCB on a CNC machine and actually have it work as we intended. Now despite the limitations of this method, I'm really excited about how I can use it in upcoming projects. And even if it means that the only benefit I get from doing this is that my soldering and wiring management becomes a bit easier, that's a win and I'll take it. If you enjoy this video, then you might also enjoy this video where I go ahead and I make my very own productivity timer to help me focus and get into deep work mode. I'll leave a link to that video somewhere on the screen above. And that's going to do it for this video guys. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave some comments down below. And most importantly, when in doubt, just make it. I'll catch you all next time.